Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in again to That Art Prof. I hope that you were able to get a good feel for all your brushes um, in our last exercise and kind of figure out how they're going to work for you as well as uh, which ones can kind of give you which effects and that you had a successful fruit exercise. Today we're going to work on two different techniques. Uh, one is called the wet on wet technique and the other one is called the dry brush technique. So the first one we're gonna do is, is the wet on wet. As you can see here, I'm kinda you know, pr just preparing my paper and getting it nice and, and wet with some, you know, some clean water and just kinda covering that surface and making sure it's nice and damp. So today we're gonna spend a few minutes uh, just quickly kinda making like a, a sky. And the reason, you know, a lot of people, obviously a lot of like landscape artists out there and stuff, you, you need to, to kind of learn how to master that technique. So I, I'm going to, you know, as you can see, loading up my brush here, I have a nice big uh, flat brush. It's kind of meant for this uh, technique. It covers a lot of ground pretty quickly. And you can see here that I'm just going to kind of lay in that sky. I'm going to reach in maybe for some different shades um, of, you know, different kind of shades of blue. And... And I'm just going to kind of let the water work with the paint. So and you'll hear me say this a lot, but always the first ingredient in watercolor is water. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of it. Uh, the nice thing about working with wet on wet is you can get a really natural feel, especially when you're, you know, making large areas of sky or water. So I'm going to, you know, put a little bit of this, you know, violet now on my brush. And you're going to just kind of see as it kind of hits that paper, you're letting the water do the work for you. You can see it kind of pushing it around um, where I don't have to do too much of the work. Uh, the water that's already prepared on my paper is going to kind of naturally uh, hold that in and it, as you can see the water starting to blend it together. I might uh, reach for another brush now, um, a, more of a round brush. So I can kind of introduce a little bit, you know, a little bit more uh, color in there. So maybe I might grab a little bit of this, a um, little bit of this red, um, mix it with my violet. And you can see, I'm gonna, you know, kind of add in a little bit more, a little, just a little bit more color in there. And as it again, as it just kind of hits that water, you can see it starting to take off. The water on the on the paper is working naturally to kind of create that bleeding effect. You might see uh, that you know I, I can kind of even use my brush to pull that water around that's just kind of sitting there nicely on the paper. So you should definitely go ahead and you know and give this a try and just you know work on a you know a piece of scrap paper first and just to kind of see what it can do. For you and you know later on you'll be able to really work on making a nice project where you can really see the effects of the way that just hits nicely but this is just a kind of a quick start to the wet on wet technique so that you can kind of see how that works I'm gonna go ahead and pull my paper up here and then we're gonna do a little demonstration with the dry brush technique of course you would want to wait till yours is dry um, you know, because it will, and when I lift this up, and you'll notice that it's kind of, it's going to move that water around. So definitely, you know, when you when you have the opportunity, wait till that dries. Um, but for our purposes here, we're just going to lift that up. You can see all the water really starting to pool off of that surface. So I might just kind of tilt it down a little bit, and uh, you know, I'll save this so that I can, when it dries, I can work back into it. So as I mentioned. Um, the second technique is the dry brush technique. And I'm just gonna kind of set this down here. I already kind of prepared a little bit of a background. As you can see, I use that wet on wet technique in my sky a little bit here on my ground surfaces. And while the paper was still really wet, I kind of put in these loose figures of, of some trees in there. And the wonderful thing about the dry brush technique is obviously you, um, you don't want a super dry brush, uh, but you do just want it a little bit damp. Um, and this is going to allow you for some control. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, we're going to put in maybe a little rock into into our painting here. And you can see I'm just going to get my get my brush. You know, it's like I said, it's wet, um, but it's not it's not super wet like it was the last time. And I might choose some areas where I, you know, want to maybe even just like I said, lay down a, a small rock or two something that you wouldn't be able to do if you um, if your paper was really damp so that is kind of like the nice 
nice kind of thing about working in a dry brush technique. And again, I've got my brush held up a little closer than I did before so that I can have a lot of control over that here. You know, so maybe I want to put in some rocks. Um, you know, I'm going to wet my brush here and I might want to grab a little bit more of this green. And you'll really be able to, you know, see some of the options that you have. I can, you know, start to get some nice clean lines, some smaller lines here, but you know, want to go in and put in and put in some grass. You know, and you can really see how the th the thinness that you can that you can achieve with that. Uh, another great thing that I think is, you know, that I wanted to um, wanted to kind of mention to you too, is that uh, it's great for adding, you know, a little bit of texture. If I want to, you know, grab my, you know, brown over here and really make this uh, this the sand stand out here and look like it's you know really look like it has some texture to it I can you know just kind of flick my brush a little bit and it's gonna add you know some some texture I could you know really uh, take care of my surface make sure I didn't get any in the, you know in the in the sky you know by laying another piece of paper over it or something but for kind of these purposes I'm not really too concerned what you know what that ends up like but you can um, see the options again there I might, you know, choose to add in some more just darker areas of of the sand again. And uh, but it really does give you a little bit more control over there. It's also possible that I could, you know, think about what if I wanted to maybe I can go in and put in a little, you know, work in a little, little boat up here in, in the water. But again, my brush is quite is um, just only got a little bit of water on it. It's not a lot. Um, if it's too much, again, you can kind of just use that paper towel to to kind of clean it up a little bit. I might want to, you know, um, take some of my paint here and get it. And, the, and I'm going to just notice, you can just uh, pay attention to if it, you know, like you can get a nice clean line going here. Um, and you, would, if it's too wet for you, you would really notice that right away as it starts to hit your paper because it's not going to be as controlled as you want it to be. But you know, I can again. I can just kind of um, have some options here to to go in and and add a, add a lot of detail. And I can get as you know crazy as I want to, um, or or you know, or keep it fairly fairly simple. Uh, but it's just a, a great way again of allowing you um, to get you know a lot of fine aspects that you maybe necessarily wouldn't get otherwise. So you can see if I barely touch my brush to the paper here, I can get you know a lot of those uh, thin crisp details. So two little exercises for you to practice this week is the wet on wet and the dry brush. I'll look forward to seeing them.